Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Sean from Keto2.me. How are you doing? It's fall here in New England and honestly, I love a nice hearty soup, stew, and similar, so you're probably gonna be seeing quite a few of those on my channel. So today I'm bringing you a cheesy broccoli soup. Very simple to make. If you have some broccoli that's maybe on its last legs, it might be a great use for you. I highly recommend you check it out. Also, give it a day, because normally this soup takes its time and then becomes better and better. If you want to keep getting my content as soon as I release it, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button. Also, you can hit the bell to get notified as soon as I release videos. But onto that broccoli and cheese soup, here we go. All right, so once we get this cheesy broccoli soup going, it's gonna to start to move really quickly, especially seeing we're using a pressure cooker. So in the actual pot, I have four strips of bacon, have the pressure cooker set to saute. I'm gonna get these browned up, get some of that fat rendered, and from there, we're gonna start adding our ingredients. I'll see you when the bacon is rendered. Okay, and so now that our bacon is browned, uh, we're gonna start adding our ingredients and cooking them up based on how long they take to cook. So we're gonna start by adding about half of a white onion and one whole jalapeno. I'm including the seeds. If you don't like spicy food, I recommend either cutting the seeds out or of course, leaving the jalapeno out entirely. So peppers and onions going in. And then of course, one large carrot, uh, diced into small pieces. Uh, carrot tends to take a while, so I'm gonna throw that in at first as well. It smells fantastic in here, that bacon's going. Really the bacon's in here to add just another layer of flavor. And so I'm gonna go ahead and season this up with some salt. We're gonna add some additional seasonings later. So I'm gonna let this cook for about five minutes until it's nice and translucent and cooked through. And then we're gonna come back here, add the garlic, add some stock. A little bit of xanthan gum for that thickening power. Getting a little steamy in here, but it smells fantastic. Uh, so now that the onion is nice and translucent, we're gonna go ahead and proceed forward with adding the garlic and the xanthan gum. So I'm gonna add to the pot about a quarter teaspoon of xanthan gum. This stuff is super powerful, don't go too heavy on it. I'm just gonna sprinkle it all around. And then I'm gonna add garlic to taste. Personally, I like garlic quite a bit, so I'm gonna add about two cloves of minced garlic. Mix that around until it's fragrant. This isn't gonna take very long, probably about a minute. Trick here, not to burn the garlic. All right, now that I can smell the garlic in here, I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, the broccoli. This is two heads of broccoli. You can really use as much as you want. Just dump it right in there. Now I'm gonna mix it around to get everything nice and incorporated. Now to this, I'm gonna go ahead and add broth uh, to cover the broccoli. I'm using a beef broth to add some nice flavor. You can really use whatever you wanna use. Mine is already salted well. Uh, if you have low sodium, you're gonna wanna add even more salt to this. I'm just gonna fill this to cover about three, maybe four cups. All right, I use the whole box, that's about four cups. Now we're gonna cover this, cook it under pressure for eight minutes, do a quick release, and then we'll be back to add the remaining ingredients. I'll see you then. So this has been under pressure for about eight minutes. Uh, you can see everything's nice and cooked in there. So what I'm gonna do is actually take some of this out throw it into the cup of my immersion blender, blend it up and add it back in. What that's gonna do is give you a nice uh, hearty soup. That said, you wanna be a little careful. I personally like to have uh, different identifiable pieces in there, whether that's broccoli pieces or carrots. Um, so I'm not gonna do all of this, maybe about a third, maybe a little less. So here we go. And just add it to the cup of the immersion blender. I'm just gonna stick my blender in there and let it do its job. There you can see it did a great number. It's nice and thick. I'm gonna add that back in. I personally love this immersion blender for things like this. It just makes it so much easier than transferring to and from a blender. Um, so I'm gonna dump this back into my soup. All right, so now that everything's all blended up, to this we're gonna go ahead and add our cheese. Uh, so you can really use whatever you'd like here. I have three cups of cheddar, one cup of Mexican style blended cheese. It's just what I had in the fridge. Cheddar's probably a key ingredient. The sharper, the better. So I have four cups total of cheese here. You can use yet less, you can use more, whatever you wanna do. So I'm just gonna mix this up until it gets nice and melted. For bonus points, you can always take it out, put it in the bowl, add a little extra when you're done as well. And I fully intend to do that. Now in the interest of protecting the non-stick surface of this pot, I've changed over to a silicon spatula um, just to be on the safe side. Now you want all of this cheese to melt before the next step. Uh, because if you add the milk and cream now, it's gonna go ahead and cool the soup down, giving you a lot less heat to work with. Uh, and I want this all melted and incorporated. And so as an emulsifier, I'm gonna go ahead and add some uh, Dijon mustard right in there. About a teaspoon should do. And for spices, of course, the world is your oyster. I'm gonna add a little bit of paprika right in there. 
maybe a teaspoon and a little bit of cayenne for that smokiness. Of course, you can leave this out if you're not into spicy food. As you can tell, I, my, in my kitchen, I love spicy food. I feel bad for my wife. She likes it less than I do, but I cook. There we go. We have a nice cheesy soup. Um, everything seems to be fairly well incorporated. So now I'm going to add our milk. This is half cup of heavy cream, half cup of unsweetened almond milk. You can use whatever ratio you'd like. The more heavy cream, the thicker and richer, but of course more calories. Just dump that in there. Now, of course, my favorite part, you gotta test this, make sure it's seasoned properly. Awesome, mine's perfect. Uh, you may have to add some more salt, some pepper, whatever you wanna do. The, again, it's a soup, so you can really have some options. Uh, plate this up and we'll go ahead and have dinner. All right, now that that's done, pressure cooker, really simple. You can eat it tonight, you can eat it tomorrow. Honestly, I had this a couple of times over the course of a few days, and the second day was definitely way better, but the first day was still delicious, made for a great, warm evening meal. Comes together very quickly, makes a lot, very cheap to prepare. I highly recommend you check this out. What other kind of soups and stews do you like? I'd love for you to leave a comment below, that way I have some more ideas about what I can make this winter to stay warm. Until next time, I'm Sean from Keto2.me. Take care, everybody. Hey, and that's another one for the books. If you like this content, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. That way you get updates as soon as I post them. You can hit that thumbs up button if you like it, and that way I know I'm making videos that you find enjoyable. Also, if you're looking for new ideas constantly released when I release them, hit the bell. That way you'll get notified for new, for new updates and new videos. Also, if you're looking for some of the best prices on keto products, check out the store at keto2.me. I'd really appreciate it. It helps support me and it helps support this channel. So if you like what you see, I'd love, I'd love for you to visit the store. Until next time, I hope your keto baking's going great. Enjoy.